mathematics learners welcome to distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy in today's mathematics video tutorial i will be summarizing important theorems that you need to know in order to solve geometry riders or geometric problems before we get started with the video tutorial please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you also hit the notification bell so that you do get notified every time i upload a new video so we're going to start off by discussing the theorems that talk about the center of a circle all right so these theorems actually talk about all that you need to know with regards to the radius the diameter or the chords in a circle let's have a look okay so the first theorem that we're going to look um look into is a theorem that states that a line segment that joins the center of a circle to the midpoint of any chord is perpendicular to the chord let's actually draw this and see exactly what it means okay so we're going to actually start off by putting the um obviously putting the centers of the circle okay and we are actually discussing our first theorem which we are going to call our theorem one okay one okay and theorem one states that a line segment that joins the center of a circle to the midpoint of any chord is perpendicular to that chord all right so we have a line segment so we actually have a chord okay it tells us about a chord right and it tells us about a line segment that joins the center of the circle to the midpoint of a chord and it says that this line seg um, segment is perpendicular to the chord right so if you had to say that this is obviously our O. Okay, this is our O. This is our A. This is our B. And this is our P. Right? This theorem is saying that. OP, the line segment OP, is perpendicular to AB if AP is equal to BP. So if our AP is equal to B. your pb okay also taking into consideration that oa and our ob are the radii of our circle okay Okay, so that is our first theorem. Let's have a look at our second theorem. Okay, this is our theorem two. So what does our theorem two state? The second theorem states that the angle that the arc of a circle subtends at the center is double the angle that is on the circle or the circumference okay i'm going to draw this for you guys okay obviously it says that we've got an angle at the center 
of our circle and then we've got an angle on the circumference of our circle right and the theorem says that the angle that the arc of a circle subtends at the center so this angle that is subtended by the arc right is double the angle that is on the circumference so that angle is double this angle that is on our circumference right so if we had to label our diagram as a b and c and o this theorem is saying that angle b o c c o being the angle is equal to two times the angle that is on our circumference all right and let's look at our last theorem theorem three our last theorem for the center of circle theorems right so this is theorem three what does theorem three state right theorem three says that if you have a diameter in a circle then the angle that is subtended by the diameter is a right angle right so we've got obviously a diameter it talks about a diameter so obviously the diameter goes to the center like that right and it says that let me just put properly like that and it says that the angle that is subtended by this diameter is a right angle right so this angle there is a right angle so let's label our diagram so we've got angle we've got a there we've got c there and we've got b okay so let's say we've got triangle a b c right and this theorem says that the angle that is subtended the angle that is subtended by our diameter is 90 degrees so our angle c is 90 degrees let's write that out so that you see what it means right so if our a o b is a diameter all right this theorem is saying that angle a c b is equal to 90 degrees okay guys so now let's look at the theorem that talks about angles that lie in the same circle segment so now we're going to be looking at the fourth theorem right so this is theorem four all right so theorem four states that if you have angles that are in the same segment in a circle then those angles are equal okay so let's draw this and see what it means okay so we've got that all right cool and then we're going to label this diagram as a b c and d all right and theorem 
4 states that if you have angles that are in the same segment in a circle, then those angles are equal. Or you can say that angles that are subtended by the same chord or arc of a circle are equal, right? So if you look at this arc here, right? This theorem says that angle A is equal to angle B, right? Because these angles are subtended by the same arc. And if you look at the arc here, right? It tells you that angle D is equal to angle C because they are subtended by the same arc, right? So if we had to write this down, right, this is saying that angle D is equal to angle C and angle A is equal to angle B, right? Because these are angles that are in the same segment, okay? They're angles that are subtended by the same chord or the same arc, okay? Angle A is equal to angle B because they're subtended by the same arc. And angle D is equal to angle C because they're also subtended by the same arc. Okay, so now let's look at cyclic quadrilaterals. Okay, so we are going to start off with theorem 5. I'm going to call this our theorem 5, right? And theorem 5, okay, and the cyclic quadrilateral states that Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, right? So let's draw this. You've got a cyclic quadrilateral, right? So you're given a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, let's just make this look nicer. Like that. <laughs> okay. So you're given a cyclic quadrilateral, and this theorem states that, right, opposite angles of a cyclic quad, which is a quadrilateral that is inscribed in a circle, right, are supplementary, okay? So if you had to label this diagram as A, that is A, that is our B, that is our C and that is our D, this theorem is saying that opposite angles, meaning that your A and your D are supplementary, right? What does supplementary mean? They add up to 180. So angle A plus the angle D is equal to 180, right? And angle C and angle B also equal to 180 degrees degrees right so that is the first theorem that you guys need to remember about cyclic quadrilaterals that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary right now what happens if your cyclic quadrilateral has an exterior side right what happens if it has an exterior side i'm going to start off by writing this is theorem six okay okay so you're given a cyclic quad and this one has an exterior side like so okay and then what happens in this case what does this theorem tell us okay this theorem tells us that 
an exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. Let us label this. All right. I'm going to label that as our A, our B, our C, B, our D. And then I'm going to call this my B1 and B2. Right. So which angle here is our exterior angle? Our exterior angle is our B1, right? And this theorem is saying that this exterior angle of the cyclic quad is equal to the interior opposite angle. All right. So let's write that down. Our angle B1. is equal to the opposite interior angle which is equal to d right interesting huh now what happens when you get tangents to a circle right now let's discuss the tangent to the circle theorems. So there's also three important theorems that you should know that talks about tangents to a circle. So we'll call this theorem seven. Let me just check there. That was six. So we'll call this theorem seven. Seven. So what does theorem seven say? Okay. So this is the radius tangent theorem. Okay. So this is a radius tangent theorem. I'm just going to put it there. Okay. So, theorem 7 is our radius tangent theorem. Okay. Radius tangent theorem. So, what does this theorem say? It states that a line passing through the center of a circle will be perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency. All right. So we've got a line that is passing through the center of a circle. So we want to have a center of a circle there. Let's make it in like brown so you guys can see it nicely. All right. So we've got a center of a circle there. Now. And it talks about a line passing through the center of a circle will be perpendicular to a tangent. Okay, so I'm going to start off by just putting the tangent here. I'll put it in red. That's my tangent. And you know that a tangent is a line that just touches a point on a circle, right? A line that just passes or touches a point on a circle, right? And this theorem is saying that a line passing through the center, from the center, will be perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so if we were to label our diagram as O and A, Okay, the radius tangent theorem says that OA is perpendicular to, let's call this um, BC. OA is perpendicular to BC. So the tangent to the circle, this tangent BC is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. Okay, 
So the tangent to our circle, our tangent to our circle, our tangent to our circle is the line BC, right? So the line BC. Is perpendicular to our radius OA. So a line passing through the center of a circle will be perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency. Point of tangency is that point there, right? Our point A. Okay, so the, our tangent line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. That is what our theorem 7 is saying. Let's move on. Okay, this is the tangent from your external point theorem. Okay, tangent from your external point theorem. So this theorem talks about if you have two tangents that are, let's make that a tangent line there, okay, <laughs> so this theorem basically states that if you have two tangents drawn from the same external point to the same circle, then these two tangents will be equal, right? So let me just try and actually draw the tangent there. Okay, and another tangent there. So that is our tangent. Okay, and that is the other tangent that we have there, all right? And then we are going to call, label these as your A, right? Point of tangency there is B, and our other point of tangency there is C, right? And this theorem is saying that these two tangents that are drawn from the same point, which is A, are equal, right? So, A, B, tangent A, B is equal to tangent A, C. And what is the reason? Because they are tangents that are drawn from the same point, okay? Then we said that this is theorem eight. And your theorem eight is your, your tangent from external point theorem. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at theorem 9, right? And theorem 9 is the tan chord theorem. So this is your tan chord theorem. Okay, what does this theorem state? This theorem states that if you have an angle formed between a tangent and a chord at the point of tangency, then point of tangency is where the tangent, uh, that's that point where the tangent touches the circle, then this angle will be equal to any other angle in the alternate segment. So let's draw this and see what it means. Okay, so obviously we've got a tangent line, right? That's our tangent line. And remember we said the point of tangency 
is the point in which the tangent touches the circle at that one point. Okay. And then let's say you've got like that's a point of tangency. You've got that there, and then you've got that there, and you've got that there. Okay. So we have an angle that is formed between a tangent. Okay, we've got an angle that is formed between a tangent, that's our tangent, and a chord, that's our chord, that's our chord, right? And the angle that is formed, that's the angle that is formed, that is the angle that is formed, right? And they're saying that the angle that is formed, okay, let's actually change the color. So that's the other angle that is formed, right? So this angle here will be equal to any other angle in an alternate segment, right? So if you were to label this as, if you had to label our diagram as your Q, and P, and this is obviously we'll say this is R, and then we'd say this is one, this is two, and that is three, right? Then our angle R three is going to be equal to our angle Q, and our angle R one is going to be equal to our angle. E. Okay, so we said that our angle R3 is going to be equal to angle Q, the alternate segment, and your angle R1 is going to be equal to angle P. All right, I'll go through that again. The theorem states that if you have an angle formed between a tangent and a chord, so that's the chord there, and that's a chord there, and then we've got an angle that is formed between the tangent and a chord, the tangent, the tangent and that chord, right? At the point of tangency, which is O R, then this angle will be equal to any other angle in the alternate segment, right? Therefore, that's why we said that R one is equal to P. And our R3 is equal to our Q. So learners, it is very important that you know these theorems because knowing them and understanding what they mean will help you in approaching your questions. Okay. And I also just want to bring your attention to this acronym. Okay. Called Dr. Cape Town. Okay. So it's an anum where D stands for diameter, R stands for radius, C stands for cyclic quadrilateral, P stands for parallel lines, and your T stands for your tangent. Okay. All the time when you're working with your geometry riders, have in your mind, the acronym Dr. Cape Town, because it helps you in approaching a question. We think, okay, if we have a diameter and radius, okay, if we have a diameter, then we remember the first theorem. We remember actually the fourth, uh, was it the fourth? Oh, well, hold on now. Okay, if we have a diameter, we remember the third theorem that we, we spoke about, right? That the diameter, if you have a diameter that subtends If you have a diameter in a circle, then the theorem states that the angle that is subtended by the diameter 
is equal to 90. So if you have, think of Dr. Cape Town and you think, okay, D means diameter. If you're given a diagram with a diameter, then you need to think of this theorem here. You need to think of theorem three. Okay. If you're given a radius, okay, if you're given a, a, a center of a circle and you're given radius, then you need to think of theorem one and theorem two. Chances are you've got an angle in the center that's equal to two times the angle of in the circumference, or you've got the midpoint uh, chord theorem that you need to think of, right? Another thing that you be aware of in terms of this acronym that I'm telling you about is C for cyclic quadrilaterals, right? If you've got a cyclic quadrilateral in your diagram, then you need to think of these three theorems, right? Where we spoke about angles that are in the same segment, where we spoke about angles um, in a cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles are supplementary, and we also spoke about an exterior angle in a, sub, a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the opposite interior angle. And we also spoke about um, your tangents. If you've got a tangent, if you're given a tangent in your diagram, then you need to think of the uh, three theorems, right? Your radius tangent theorem, right? You need to think about your tangent from an external point, which is this one. And you also need to think about your tan chord theorem, right? If you have a tangent and it forms an angle with a chord, then that angle is equal to the angle in the alternate segment, right? And lastly, you always, if you have a diagram where it talks about parallel lines, then you need to think of the word fun, where the F, right, tells you about the corresponding angles, right? The U, right? If you've got like parallel lines, right? And it forms a shape like a U like that. And you have to think of your core interior angles that are supplementary. Your core interior angles, angles there are supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180. And lastly, right? You can you also have to think about your alternate angles. Okay, so always remember that in your approach to your geometry writers, guys, think of this nice acronym, Dr. Cape Town, because it helps you remember that if I've got a DNR, then I need to think of then I need to think center of circle theorems, right? Center of circle theorems, and I have my D and my R. If I have my if they tell me up uh, if they tell me that I've got like a cyclic quadrilateral, right? Then I need to think of my cyclic quadrilateral theorems, right? If I if they tell me that I've got parallel lines, then you need to think of corresponding angles. You need to think of core interior angles. You need to think of um, alternate angles, right? And if they tell you that you've got tangents, right? If you've got a tangent, then you need to think of your Radius tangent theorem. You need to think of your tangent from your exter um, external point theorem and your tan chord theorem. Okay. So that's all for today. Um, uh, for our math lesson, that's it for today. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and um, I will see you guys on my next upload. I really hope that you guys really enjoyed this lesson. I hope that I summarized the theorems and I simplified the definitions for you to understand. And um, yeah, guys, happy studying. And I will be uploading um, just tutorials where we tackle problems together. So that's it for today, guys. And I'll see you guys on my next upload. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye.